Item number SCP-5792, Containment Class Safe, Disruption Class Dark, Risk Class Caution. Special Containment Procedures SCP-5792 is to be kept in the unused janitorial closet at the east wing of Site-164. Cameras around the halls of Site-164 should be monitored regularly as SCP-5792 follows its route. Personnel should be familiarized with the standard route SCP-5792 takes and report any major deviations. Description SCP-5792 is an iron short sword believed to have originated in the Shaw's Republic. Prior to incident 5792A, SCP-5792 was contained in a small storage locker at Site-164 following POI-5792's apprehension by the Foundation. It showed no anomalous effects before Incident 5792A. It is to be noted that POI-5792 was heavily affiliated with the occult and was brought to the Foundation regarding spiritual matters in BEEP. SCP-5792 is capable of levitation from as high as one meter. At most times, SCP-5792 is facing held upwards with its point occasionally dragging on the ground. All attempts to make physical contact with SCP-5792 are met with light to heavy resistance in the form of swings and thrusts. If left unimpeded from its usual route, SCP-5792 will not perform any actions to harm any personnel near it. All attempts to communicate with SCP-5792 result in failure. See Incident 5792-B for recent developments. If locked in the room, SCP-5792 has been noted to begin to scrape at the door or entrance gradually making a breach big enough to fit itself through. After, it will trail the halls of SCP-164, scraping the ground in various sweeping motions. Site-164's floor was reinforced with metal, following an unrelated breach. Thus, it was deemed a more efficient use of resources to let SCP-5792 follow its normal route under supervision. As of 10th of November 2007, a group of personnel have tied the end of a broom to SCP-5792 following complaint of the distractions SCP-5792 made. SCP-5792 is unable to remove the broom and complaints regarding the noises have ceased. When SCP-5792's daily route through the facility is completed, it will hang itself on the tool rack of the janitorial supply closet of Site 164's east wing, where it will remain until 9. This behavior shows similarities to Madison's agreed terms of employment prior to Incident 5792A, including the stipulation that Madison is to not enter any containment chambers for cleaning. As of writing, Multiple written messages have been observed by SCP-5792, all communicated by various scrapes and marks to the office carpet via SCP-5792, and are typically written as stereotypical questions many working adults made to one another. Examples include, when's this shift over? And how's the weather today? And, did you see the game last night? I wish the Packers won. It is unknown if this shows any type of sentience on SCP-5792's part. Addendum 5792-1 Incident 5792-A On the 9th of August 2007, POI-5792 attempted to breach containment utilizing SCP-5792. POI-5792 was successful in evading the notice of nearly all personnel on the site as a result, 
Only one personnel was a casualty outside of Site-164. Charles Madison, a new janitor hired by Site-164, observed POI 5792 escaping, eventually leading to a struggle as POI 5792 attempted to enter the individual's vehicle. During the struggle, Madison was believed to have been killed by a stab through the heart using SCP-5792 and thrown out of the vehicle with the anomaly. While dealing with the breach of containment, Madison's body remained there for deep days. After recovering SCP-5792, agents were unable to locate the victim's corpse. SCP-5792 was placed into its storage again, where it remained for beep days. Madison was 42 when he was killed. When personnel were dispatched to inform Madison's family of his passing in a road rage accident, the agents recalled a family member, stating that Charlie was from a different time. He was always a little grumpy on Mondays. Further reviews of the similarities between SCP-5792 and Madison is ongoing. Addendum 5792-2, Incident 5792-B On the 8th of September 2007, a routine inventory check for the items in storage at Site-164 found that SCP-5792 was missing from its locker. A large number of scratches at the roof and door of the locker were present when it was breached. SCP-5792 was later located in the mess hall, using its point to press the buttons of the vending machine located there. After ordering a cola, SCP-5792 lifted the can by using its grip and cross guards. Anonymously moved it into the air, opened and mimicked a drinking motive. And after a moment, threw the can into the nearest wastebasket, causing it to spill. It then proceeded to cough out, I like the old cook better. Too sweet for me now. SCP-5792 proceeded to enter an unused workspace, formerly set up for Madison, and stabbed through the chair. Agents attempted to grab and secure SCP-5792 but were met with resistance and light injury via SCP-5792's hilt and fuller. After the struggle, SCP-5792 coughed, You doing a run? I'll take a double-double. Before the agents exited the space, SCP-5792 additionally coughed, No cream and one sugar. Agent Raymond, who was present for incident 5792A, suggested bringing SCP-5792 to the demands it requested. After performing the same display of drinking the beverage, SCP-5792 proceeded to write, Thanks toots, I'm not me without my coffee. After incident 5792B's conclusion, SCP-5792 has been considerably more amicable and communicative to personnel approaching and interacting with it, despite these actions interrupting its route. Further attempts to give various beverages to SCP-5792 as a means of communication are pending review.